This is Robert's RD60 DAB and FM portable radio based on the old Revival series that started in the 90s. And I bought it from an eBay seller who's selling it cheaply because of the finish. You can see that all the fabric has degraded on here and apparently that's um, a trait of these radios. There's a lot of them for sale in this condition that work fine and it kind of shortens the life of them which is a shame they really need to address that but in the meantime I thought I would buy one of these cheaply and try and recover it so I contacted another eBay seller and they sent me a sample of this uh, cloth which is a, a tweed effect cloth and I've uh, been experimenting by as you can see there's two missing from the bottom there uh, sticking them with different glues onto um, a similar radio from the 50s, the original R200, and uh, I've discovered that if you use Yoohoo, it's not too porous and it doesn't seep through the back like some glues, uh, and the finish is quite pleasing. So I'm going to recover it. Okay, let's have a look at the radio itself, and uh, on the back you've got telescopic aerial which you could remove if you needed to connect it to say your rooftop aerial if you have one you just put this little tool on the back here and uh, you can unscrew it and then screw your outdoor antenna on with an F connector there's also a line out socket on here you can play it through your hi-fi system there is also a headphone socket on there and there's an aux in so you can play your iPod through it DAB Plus is operating in the UK now, Virgin Anthems and Virgin Chilled, uh, Jazz FM, uh, Jack, the Jack brands, they're all broadcast in DAB Plus and on local multiplexes, Caroline and stations like that. This one I thought was supposed to be a DAB Plus, I thought the RD60s were all um, capable, apparently not. It has that socket there they're not as likely as pure to produce an upgrade so we might be lumbered with old technology here there's the battery compartment the battery box you can't recharge your batteries in here and of course we've got to recover all these bits as well so we'll see how we get on with dismantling it and then recovering it well here we are I've got the radio apart First of all, I took the aerial off with this little tool, which is made by Pure, which was actually designed with the Pure Evoke, but this is a standard F connector, so I took that off with that, and then a bigger spanner to get it off of um, the aperture there. It was an absolute pig um, to get apart. This is not like uh, a vintage radio at all. It's not like a, a Hacker or even an early Roberts, say the 606 MB from the 70s, which you know, I've rebuilt countless numbers off. This chassis, which obviously fits in the top, and this, it's held on by these screws that go in here. Um, now, on a vintage radio, you'd be able to just undo the, the nuts, but these nuts are like that. They're round. They're very hard to access because there's various things in here that get in the way there's actually some of these components are in the way and um, in fact I thought because they're black it looks like it's part of the chassis so I realized that they must have been screwed from underneath the material from this side so the screws were in there and uh, I loosened it off with some success but obviously the whole thing was going round and round and round and that's because this was just slipping round so the only way to undo them was to come at it with a screwdriver from through the case and hold that screw in place so that the nut wouldn't slip round and so I had to expose all of them dig deep and hold a screwdriver there while I Try to get my fingers in there in between all these components and then when the um, chassis needed to come out nope they'd you can see where all this tape is they'd stuck it with some horrible 
double sided tape. Um, but anyway, it's all apart. It really is terrible, this finish. I mean, you know, people on eBay say, well, you, know, you could put your finger through it. I mean, you certainly can. But, I mean, say a little kid got hold of this radio and went, oh, it's dreadful, isn't it? Robert should be ashamed of themselves for putting their name, putting the royal name, the royal seal of approval. There we are. Okay, well, we've stripped it down, and well, there we are. And there's the pile of uh, useless cover felt. It came off in a weird sort of way. There's this sort of fairly good quality under felt. So it's the top coat of the material that's dodgy. So what I think I might do is use a sort of dyeing process. I did something similar to that with this. I mean, I did take it apart to do this, but this is a really nice finish. And it's just a mixture of red shoe cream, red paint, and super resin. And the other thing is that the other updates on the upgrade, as it were, Basically, my question was, uh, I understand you can download new software from your site via the USB socket inside the back to make this DAB Plus compatible. And that was sent um, December last year, uh, 2018. And uh, on the 25th of January, 2019, dear Mr. Evans, this is from Robert's Radio Technical Web Contact, Thank you for your inquiry. My apologies for the delay in my reply. It is not possible to download or install new software on this model. Compatibility with DAB Plus for this model would be hardware related. So that's really not very helpful at all. Um, can you please provide the serial number for your radio and indicate which color it is? So uh, bought from the defunct Comet and even though they've got an upgrade socket, they cannot upgrade it you cannot upgrade it pure will if you push them pure will send you a software update which will update an old pure verona that i have um to dab plus but basically the radio itself is quite good the actual unit i quite like and the case is just as good as a 1950s one they, they weren't that special anyway um it's all this gluing and not dab plusing so there we are, rant over, and uh, I shall carry on um, with the covering process and let you know how it's going. Right, I've uh, rubbed this down a little bit more with uh, some light wire brushes, and it's now quite smooth. I previously removed the badge. You've got to be careful with that because it's very brittle plastic and you can easily snap it. So uh, you have to push it quite evenly until from the other side until it eventually comes out. Now the fabric, the Tweedy fabric has come through from the, the eBay seller. That was the sample they sent me. So hopefully it's going to be exactly like this red. It is actually. Yeah, I think that's a good match. I'll put my paint mixture on here first. The inside of the radio so that uh, if it's not 100 percent it doesn't matter and we won't have to do it again so uh, what i got here is some turtle wax and color magic for and i had a, a red hyundai car it's basically just touch up paint um we've got some red shoe cream and then this super resin which is wonderful stuff really strong glue this will be the last thing I add to the mix just before we daub it on and you only want to use enough of this obviously to cover the area that you're going to daub okay so I've mixed up the color magic and the shoe cream you just need to stir it up a little bit more you don't need an awful lot of this we just need to you know make make it stick a bit Go on, you know you want to drop. All right. It comes to something when you start talking to glue. 
we have a, a larger brush and a smaller brush for the detail and we're going to leave it overnight and see what the result is and uh, I shall report back and if it's any good going to be hard work telltale brush hairs just about gazed it right the amount of paint I've put in there just for our overnight drying test I'm sorry WS Robson's crunchy honey mustard but uh, you're probably worthy of a bit more than my paint mixture but uh, but we enjoyed your mustard before we uh, emptied this bottle I'm so pleased with this he says smugly until the next morning he finds it's dried in a horrible fashion Right, here we are the next day and uh, I did a couple of coats They're very quick drying, partly because of the glue and I've also, as you can see, done around the edges and I'm on the second coat of that the next day There we are Plate right into the grooves because the material will fit down in there but you don't want to see any bare wood Right, we're about to cover uh, the radio. Now the front I'll start with. First of all, I've got to remember to put these screws back. Uh, remember the screws in the earlier part of the video um, where uh, the nuts were round on the other side, but the screws were slipping round. Well, I've decided I'm gonna glue these screws in so that when it comes to putting PCB and the speaker enclosure back these will be solid so even with round nuts if I decided to use the old round nuts they won't move around so we just mix up This epoxy here, the resin and the hard nut, mix that up. Just really need a drop of glue probably just around. Alright, so that one in there first. I mean this is a five hour harden, proper harden and 24 hours before you need to start using a moving part that you put together. Keep a screw in there to prevent the glue from hardening. As you can see, just try and pour out a bit on the tile just to make sure it comes out properly. And those two are filled up with the other type of glue, which is fine. I'll replace the screw in there. It's almost there. We use it like a rolling pin. It's the cocktail stick. I guess it's working. We've got our material well, I've cut out. So roughly just a little bit larger than the size of the back. Now uh, we're going to have to cover that panel there. I don't really want to remove it. Obviously on that side I've painted. So I'm going to make a little template for this to put over there.
roughly it's one and a quarter inches down from the top about there um, to mark the corners it's such good quality material I'm really impressed with this I keep thinking the reverse side is the main side one and a half inches from the top and a half inch from the side so place that on there Cut it out with a fine scissors. We're using Yoohoo. Reason for that, I found it's the best glue for material because it doesn't show through the front. more I always underestimate how much I need the material around the hook oh, I have got a, allowed a bit of glue to get onto the outside which needs to be quickly addressed so let's go and get some leather wipes when it dries there'll be no telltale sign Not quite sure how well I've Measure this up. Well that's the back more or less finished, I've trimmed around the edges, I shall put some new piping in there, it'll look much nicer. Um, I don't know whether I'm going to cover that edge or not, because I don't really fancy trying to cover this inside and you wouldn't be looking at it all the time. And. Uh, I might actually, because they've got these horrible nails they've put on the bottom here, I might actually, because there's a line there, bring the material up to here. So again, the red paint that I've applied here will be useful there and any other real um, edges. So there we are, let's put uh, that, that away. And uh, quite quite pleased with that. And we'll put this down here. I'll cut a piece out here and uh, mark the middle. Here it is fully covered and uh, I'm glad I left the red bits in because I've left some of them some of the areas blank and anything where I've basically not covered it properly uh, only red shines through and not wood because this is uh, I'm not professional at this but uh, there's a bit showing through there um, in the end I did this in two sections so that I could get everything right um, so I had a bit wrapped around from there to there and then put a plate across there which also holds the braid or whatever you call it, the piping in so that acts as a, a buffer for the material and the original material with piping going around there these plates are just um, cut from uh, plates available from a craft shop and
drilled with a very fine bit through there, put screws in there um, and I did the top se section separately as you can see and because the join isn't perfect there and this material tends to fray a bit, I don't know whether I'll be using this again, um, I have joined with the, the same idea as the bottom but with a narrower strip. Piping on the back as well, the original piping I've used and um, fixed it like that basically with some staples and fabric pins and uh, all that remains now is to put the badge in place um, very carefully. I've just connected up all the components and I've put batteries in for the first time. I haven't even tried this set with batteries before and there's the uh, connection block for the back which goes on the back where you would plug in your power supply so it's going to be running on batteries and we're just turn it on there we are that's working that's good enough for me one thing that they've done which is better than the uh, older Roberts is that they've actually so that you don't get the polarity wrong on the speakers they've got uh, two different side connectors so that you can't mess up plus and minus so that the uh, phasing of the speaker well, there's only one speaker but you know the cone going backwards and forwards rather than forward and backwards I suppose but whether that makes any difference when there's only one speaker so well done on that if not many other things it's not too bad if you can uh, get rid of all this horrible sticky stuff which I have done from uh, the unit and uh, it's going back without any sticky stuff it doesn't need any gluing glue gunning and uh, we'll put it together and see what it's like all the badges on by the way now there you go and here we are with the finished product was open at seven o'clock lovely to speak to her so, well forgive mark in shepton who said what's this about queen playing somerset i've checked all the venues <laughs> and they're not but we won't worry about that too much no, no, no. we've got our final trip to moorland with so I've affixed the original Comet sticker and the Robert sticker. And there it is. The hardest thing was actually getting this handle on because you need two circlips and the ones that were on there were just wrecked as soon as they came off. So I had to find a couple of others and then I tried to get them on with this plastic cover in the way and so I then have to take it off again fortunately it comes off without taking the whole thing out we have the paint on there and on the bottom it looks like that the typical um, Poundland table protectors over the screws my wife said uh, you should be really proud of that I mean I think it's a it's a good first attempt. This piping is sticking out a bit, she did say. Um, well, I obviously didn't stretch this tight enough around, but uh, but generally speaking, it's pretty good, isn't it? I've got the badge in all right. And uh, it, it's quite a nice radio, and certainly better than it was.